welcome to another great Cal Basic tutorial. This is a tutorial for the Logic Green Technologies LG T8XM chipset. And this is part eight, and we're starting to look at pulse width modulation. Well, this is part of a much bigger program of um, tutorials, and we're on a, a much later one, well, session 11 in terms of progress through, and this is video eight. So what do these look like? They look like um, standard PCBs. They may come as chips as well. And they look like an Uno, or I'm going to be using the one on the top left, the green one. And mine looks like this. Well, up to now, we've been adding some LEDs um, with re suitable resistors. And um, I've been adding them in over here on the right-hand side. I've added in a switch and an ADC. But today, we're not going to be using any of that because we're actually going to be moving across to the other side of the um, the board over here. I'm, I've added in um, on this particular port here, D5, and another LED with a suitable resistor. And why have I done that? Is because I need to start to use the pulse width modulation capability of this microcontroller. So let's zoom in and have a look at that again. I've connected it to D5 here which is port D5 as well. I'm going to be I've connected in my LED with my resistor. I'll show you that in a second. And I'm going to be talking to this particular pulse width, part of the circuitry inside that microcontroller, 0C, 0B. Now, what is important is that um, the software components could be done, the software pulse width modulation I will show you could be done on any port. But once we go to hardware, it can only be done on specific ports. And this is one of them, as it's a P pulse width modulation port. Let's have a look on the lab. Um, this is the board I've got. Um, and what you can see here is this LED here flashing. And um, I've connected in a resistor in here. These other LEDs and the, and the pot that was here and the switch are now just sitting there um, alone. So if we look at PowerPoint, what I've done, I've added in LED3 here with a suitable resistor into port D5. So what we're going to do is generate a simple square wave for a set time. That's part uh, one. Part two will then generate a fixed frequency signal, um, which is a a legacy methodology that um, Hugh implemented many years ago, and then we'll look at variable frequencies um, on this particular chip. So well, let me just tell you what's on the screen here. What have we got? We've got the standard editor on the uh, left there. That's our code segments here. We'll be discussing that. You've got me. You've got the uh, an oscilloscope. I have an oscilloscope attached, and you can see it through this orange cable here. And you'll see this one orange cable occasionally because I'm just I need to show you what's happening on the oscilloscope. And you can see the LED is pulsing up and down. And that's where we'll get to in a moment. So let's just um, get rid of that flashing LED there. And now we've got a standard square wave generated in software. And you can see that as proof in the oscilloscope. So how do we do that? Very simple. We specify our chip and um, option explicit, good practice. And we just need to do a few things. We need to define a constant. And you can do this on a number of channels. So check out the help. But this is in software. And I define the software port as P PWM underscore out one, and I tell it which port it's on. And that tells our software and the compiler which port to simulate this square wave on. You, you should, for good practice, you just tell it the port is an out port, so that tell it, say to it, direction, DIR, that particular constant is an out. And then you're going to do, do a do loop, which is this do loop forever, and here is the actual command. PWM out and give it three parameters. Parameter one is the channel, and that relates to this number at the end of the out statement. Tell it a duty, and a 127 is um, half of the parameter you can give it, which is 0 to 255, and that equates to 0% to 100% duty. And the duty, as you can see at the moment, is 50%. 
therefore 125. And you can say do it for a number of cycles. So how many times do you want to go around generating this square wave? And then it will exit out. So if I put a weight in here of one second and change the pulse PMW out to one cycle, you'll see on the oscilloscope, you'll get one pulse. Because the next pulse is a second away. If we want two pulses, I have two pulses slightly off the screen, I understand, on the oscilloscope, but that's good enough to demonstrate this is in software. If I want to change the um, duty cycle, simply change the second parameter, which is the duty. If I set that to 31, that will give us a quarter. That's correct, on the screen, I can see it. And out of my oscilloscope here, on my other oscilloscope, which is rather fancy, it's 11.38 kilohertz, correct? Yeah, very good. And I've got a, I've got a duty there of 25%, perfect. So this is in software. PMW out, you can generate number of signals for a specific time by this third parameter. Let's go into the hardware. Now, that was all software, now we're in the hardware. You can own, now, now we're talking to the PWM module on the chip itself. Well, very similar setup, um, but again, this is for fixed. So if you just want to have a, a signal that's generated for a particular amount of time and you want to turn it off and you don't want to have it in software, you want to use the hardware module, this is a very simple way. Well, standard kickoff, chip and option explicit. Tell it the port is on, is an out, and then give it two um, constants. One's called PWN underscore frequency, and I said 10 kilohertz with a duty of 50. And that is it. That is the configuration, because that is good enough. And then within our do loop here, I'm saying PMW on. And um, you can give it other parameters, check the help out. But if I program that up, we will get a signal up here, which is actually checking it out on my biggest oscilloscope, 10, absolutely right. Now this is in percentages, so I can actually put a percentage in here for duty. I can put 90% in, but this is a constant. Therefore, once you select the frequency and the duty in your program, you cannot change it because it's a constant, hence it's a fixed. What you can do, as you can see in the code here, you can turn it off, oh, sorry, on, and then you can turn it off. So if we set this for three seconds, we'll see a signal for three seconds. It's gone off. <laughs> My um, on-screen oscilloscope is a little bit too slow, so I'm going to put a second, three-second delay in here. My big oscilloscope went offline. On for three seconds and it's off on my big scope and it's off there as well and it, it, it's a timing issue in the oscilloscope trust me so what we've got here is a method of simply stating two constants and being able to turn on or off the pwm signal it's as simple as that let me revert that code because these are these are your demonstrations that you could download finally let's look at using this particular channel um, using um, a variable frequency and a variable um, duty. Well, we need a couple, we need to do three things for this. Now, remember, we are on this port D5. We can't, this is, I'm talking specifically to this, and I need to tell it a few things. I need to tell it the clock source, or I need to tell it explicitly which channel it is, and then I'm going to actually set the um, output mode on the port and then I'm going to call the function, which actually then allows me to change the uh, duty and the frequency. So this is in the help, but essentially you just need to define which what is the clock source for um, this particular uh, channel, and it's channel two. Um, you actually define it as channel two here, which is um, this is just an enabling constant, and um, AVR channel two relates to zero uh, C zero B and then just set the port as an output. 
So one, two, and three. Then after that, we are actually making a call here with a four next loop. And the four next loop just makes it brighter and then it makes it dimmer because we're going to pass it the bright parameter as our duty. How do we do that? Well, the fourth thing we need to do is call H, that's for hardware, HPWM, channel two. Well, we know it's channel two because up here, like we said it was channel two. And we know that channel two is on 0C, 0B at a frequency, a frequency this time of 10. And this could be variable as well. And then you tell it the duty. Remember, it's going to go up and then it's go down. And here we go. We can see that the signal is now settled, is going up. The duty is increasing, holding for three seconds and then decreasing. And that signal on my big scope is 10.001. That's spot on. If I change the frequency of the chip, I'm going to set that to two. Recal basic in the background recalculates and then does all the parameters for you. If I wanted to change the um, dynamically change the um, frequency, I would change this parameter. So if I set that to 20, I'll change this parameter here, which is the line that calls the code lot. I set that to 20. We'll see half the signals that we saw before because it's twice as far. There we go. Oh, we got faster, of course. This will go up to to uh, up to the capabilities of the chip. So if I set that to five, we will see that we can change that. I mean, you could do a variable in there. I'm just uh, using a constant. I'm smiling. That's quite good. So today we wanted to look at three methods. We've seen those three methods. Um, Let's go back to PowerPoint. We wanted to see three methods, um, simple square uh, square signal for a set time. And that time is a number of duty, a number of cycles of the clock. Fixed frequency, you just set up um, two constants and then turn it on or turn it off. And finally, you set up um, a number of constants just to set up the clock source and the, and the actual channel you want to use that clock source on. And then you call an H PWM and then a um, the channel number, the frequency, and the duty. You can still write the assembler to do all this if you wish, but this is a very simple method of using it in Great Cal Basic. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, PWM using on one channel using three methods. Enjoy. <laughs>